Matter is red. Wode is blue. It's been an age since our last log, and boy have I got loads for you. Let's see what's coming up. Easy Street. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. It's Stuart here from my shop, The Woolpatch, a yarn and fabric haberdashery shop here in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. Oh, it's good to see you. It's been an age. <laughs> it's been like, what, three months? The sewing bee got in the way, basically, but that's finished. And of course, we've had the summer, we've had the Jubilee, we've had the East Anglian yarn crawl, which I can't wait to tell you about. And of course, the launch of the Lavender and Blue Collection 2022. So many finished makes. <gasps> Irene's been busy, Colin's been busy, I've been busy. Well, <laughs> not as much success though compared to Colin and Irene. You have missed talking to you and sharing everything that we've been doing here at the shop in, in the wool patch world. And also I've missed your galleries. Oh, can't wait, it's coming up later on. And what we're talking about since May, June, July, August, three months of all your makes to see. So that's a good one, watch out for that. But yes, it's been a, a wonderful summer, incredibly hot wearing not much, because <laughs> it's been so hot. We had the hottest day in the UK here this year ever, 40 degrees. Yes, I think you've got to go back to uh, 76 vintage year, may I say, um, where it was incredibly hot weather. And I think they said it was like 36 or 38 degrees, the highest, but it got to 40 degrees here. And, and we're, we're, you know what it's like with us here in the UK. <laughs> couple of days yeah we like it but then we start moaning don't we we want we want the rain but it was glorious weather so it was the time to not wear very much or certainly have some sort of air conditioned clothing so <laughs> that meant sheer started to appear this is a D&G inspired cardigan crocheted by Colin and it is phenomenal something to save us close but we're strangers Feel like we're far apart Stripping down Let me tell you about this project because we have to go back uh, in time to... So I was right there a couple of weeks ago and we saw the new spring summer collection from Dolce Gabbana. And oh, yes, I can, I can hear you getting excited already, Gordon. <laughs> I can hear you getting excited. We saw loads of crochet garments oh, and they look fabulous. A white t-shirt with the black crochet over the top, just wonderfully fitted garments. Uh, and I said to Colin, oh, I, want, I want that black crochet one. And he went, oh, we can do that easily. And I was like, really? He said, oh yes, by the looks of it, it's only trebles. And there we are, blowing up the pictures to get to get you know a right old closer look at. Oh, is that, is that Trebles? And yes, it is Trebles. And you know how clever Colin is, how unbelievably talented he is at drawing as well. Mr. Hunk came out <laughs> in that garment. So this is 
Colin's mock-up and some yarn. So I gave him some Lang yarns because I'm really loving them, a lovely Swiss company. And um, we needed a, a light four-ply. And from what I saw from Lang yarns, their baby cotton is that, exactly that. Um, looking at it now, 100% organic combed cotton, but not mercerized. So you can see it's got that, that kind of matte feel to it and over December, January, February, March he started crocheting it and I went up to there for fittings and everything and yes he had soon finished it ready for a summer 2022 reveal wearing the cardigan and here we go so from concept watching it in 2021 for the fashion show of 2022. I'm now on trend. Bang on trend for once. And I don't know whether you can see, I've got a pair of shorts on. Can I, shall I stand up? I think it would work walking down down the prom at Felix so <laughs> wouldn't it? And it does really work. I think it might be interesting to see what it's like under the black vest. Shall we take a look? There we go. <laughs> That was a Wonder Woman change, wasn't it? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I, I, uh, mm, I think that works just as nice in black, if not better. Let me know in the comments what you think. But look, can you see that lovely idea of that sheer air conditioned for the summer? <laughs> it's lovely. It's just wonderful, really nice. And the cotton feels lovely on the skin, lovely and light. It's a beautiful cotton. Might stock that, deciding, not sure. I am definitely going to stock more Lang yarns. Love them. A beautiful little Swiss company, commercial company, makes beautiful yarn. So uh, watch out for that in the winter, for sure. Um, but yes, look at that rib. And this is the ingeniousness, ingenuity? Don't know, ingeniousness, I'm gonna go with that. Ingeniousness of Colin cleverly knitted in elastic into the rib here. So it's just got a lot more stability and a lot more of that coming back into its original shape. And it pops back, it's definitely, you might even see the elastic in there. It's very clever, black shearing elastic, but it's definitely much tighter. It's keeping that structure and you won't get perhaps that openness that can sometimes happen with rib in cotton, like you could see there. Um, but that's nice because that's fluid and loose on the arm. I'm quite happy with that. But look, can you see that drape? How wonderful is that? But yes, having that structure, and when you look at the, the D&G model again, when you see that, it's, 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 it's a very, very good likeness, isn't it? Just wonderful. Colin, you're a genius, so clever. <gasps> He's knitting something for me already for this summer. Hopefully see it in September. You could wear it all year, really. Um, but again, it's in that same idea. Sheer is popping up everywhere. Uh, even more so, um, uh, a polo top. <gasps> Can't wait. Knitted in summer light DK from Rowan Cotton. <sighs> it's gonna be a good one. So come back next month. <laughs>
This was part of a group, um, as you can see down there, a production of Stitch Seekers, which I found accidentally whilst Roaming Ravelry came up. And uh, th they had made patterns as part of a calendar. And that chap there <laughs> was one of the months. And there were 12 pictures of men in knitwear and they released them as patterns and they did it for three or four years um and just the way life goes th things end and it but the patterns are still available on Ravelry it came up because I was doing a search for vests because I knew I was going to be wearing this and another knit over there to show off the sheer work and I wanted a vest underneath very much like the D&G style and I thought wouldn't it be nice to have a knitted vest as well as a knitted garment over the top. Why I thought that, I don't know. <laughs> Goes through our minds, hey? And I saw that and I thought, yes, that would be great knitted in white. And that could be my D&G vest. So um, I, I, I knitted it. So I'll, I'll let you uh, think more about that. Don't lock in yet, no need to lock in. We'll come back to that later on in the show. Um, so I thought I would knit that. So I paid for the pattern, downloaded it. So I needed to get some cotton myself. So I got some Lang yarn. So I also got their golf. But it's more of a four ply, um, th this. And it's a mercerized cotton. Uh, so it's a bit, it's got that shiny uh, gloss feel. I've never knitted with cotton. So it was going to be an experience for me. It was done in the round, which I thought great, starting from bottom up. Well, here it is. Bottom up, there we are. And there's the front pattern design. Isn't that fabulous? Look at that. It's, it's like a rib, but it's not because when you purl and you knit, you're purling into the back loop. So you knit one through the back loop and then you purl one through the back loop, which at first is quite awkward because you, you literally are coming in at an odd angle with your needle as you purl. But what it does, it creates a rib without it being elastic. So it creates this um, raised effect. So you see th the raised knit almost looks like a slip row and it's, it's, it's relief, it's towards you. And then the pearl is in, in, the, is in the background. Uh, can we get better on that? So there's the, the slip, but it's not, it's the knit in the back. And there's the pearl there. So it creates, shall I put it on and show you? <laughs> All right, I'll do that. So it creates this lovely rib effect, but it's not, you know, gonna be super tight. Um, so it still will have some movement to it and almost be just lay quite flat. And that was wonderful. And I happily knitted it, took it away on holiday, went up to Northumbria. Oh man, and we were talking that weather, wasn't it? Hot. There I was on the Northumbria coast, which stereotypically will be wet and cold all the time and very, very windy. Northumbria has wonderful coastline, incredibly bleak, huge beaches, especially when the tide goes out, huge beaches with wonderful castles dotted right on the edge as you go up the English coast path. So doing lots of walking in vest top and shorts every day. The consistency of that weather was phenomenal. Because normally you get a nice day, but then you have to prep your, your walking clothes and your cagoule and your hoodies and, and your, all your waterproofs, etc. But no, we knew it was going to be wonderful weather every day. Oh, we went on the boats to see the puffins. Oh, my word. If you ever want to do something special, then go to sea houses, get on a little boat. There's all these tour boats. Uh, and it is between literally April, May, June. I think the puffins have gone by Ju July. On this boat, uh, going round uh, all the islands, the Farn Islands, um, with a tour. And, and literally, the puffins this close. How small are puffins? They were like that. Had no idea. For some reason, I just thought they were really, really big. Um, 
and you see them so so tiny and they and they're, they're flying around the boats and then the boats know where to go right up close to the rocks and you're literally seeing all the puffins and all the little birds with all the little chicks phenomenal the noise as well anyway it was wonderful holiday and this was my knitting for the holiday so every evening i was knitting this and all was going well until i got to the armholes so i'm going to put this on <laughs> and we can have a laugh together but uh <laughs> there it is so remember this is without uh the finished armhole so this is as is so the bottom there is done that rib lovely rib effect but it's not it's not elastic do you see so it's it, it's not going whoop. so that was a clever stitch pattern here we are so that's the basics but you were then supposed to if we look I'll put the pattern back up actually so you can have a look at it and think of the year look at the pattern not him <laughs> um, now you can see at the edges there is a rib on there it looks like a rib but it's not it's the um, what we call a, a faux rib it might have a special name I'll show you here it is where you um, knit stocking stitch for however many rows and then you do a garter row, so a purl row, and then you carry on with your stocking stitch again. And that makes this purl row here naturally want to fold underneath itself, like that, see? And that makes for a, a faux rib or a binding. It looks, you would then have to sew that down. It's good for a neck for sure. So that would be like that. Well, they wanted that here on this edge and they wanted it here. And as I picked up and went round and then knitted out and then folded underneath, I kid you not, I, it looked like um, a science fiction 1970s sort of S costume uh, because it, it, I folded it under, but it still, it kind of flared out like whoop and then it came round so it looked like a yeah sci-fi like they were you know like some costumes do they sort of go whoop, come up and then round and down and then there was just so much round here too and that was like it flared out and I then got to that point where I just thought oh no so I thought well I'll try a crochet finish I did the crab stitch. I thought I won't do any ribbing. So that is a crochet, double crochet to American single crochet backwards crab stitch. And, and then I just tried a, a simple crochet bind off there. So I thought, well, perhaps it doesn't need anything. Do you just keep it loose like that? But you know, when you've got your heart set on something, I wanted it to look like that. No, nope, don't want it at all. So therefore, you're then just not happy with anything. Uh, and I suppose I look at it from a distance now, and actually, it doesn't look too bad, does it? What do you think? And I, it might look different when that was over it, but do you know, I just thought, mm, nah. So I chucked it. I'll go go in the bin. Or knowing Irene. Uh, she doesn't want anything to waste. Irene will literally unravel this and she'll have the cotton to do with something else. But it took an awful lot of cotton. Beca and I thought a vest top won't take much yarn either. But because of this faux, this rib effect of um, knitting in the back loop, purling in the back loop, it took a lot. I know I'm tall, but you've got no, you've got no sleeves. Look, 10 balls in a pack. I've got three left. It took seven, seven fifty gram balls. But yes, I expect Irene will uh, not leave anything to waste, and she'll unpick it, and she will knit something with it. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, it's. Eh, eh. <laughs> Have you got any projects like that that you you keep persevering with, and you go for it, and you go for it, and it's looking lovely, and then something comes up right at the end and just scuppers you, and you and, and you end up going, no, nope, don't like it. If you have, let us know in the comments so I don't feel so alone. <laughs> hey, that's enough knitting chat, isn't it? Um, have you been doing some sewing? Because I know many of you who watch do some sewing. I've done some sewing too over the 10 weeks worth of the sewing bee. 
I did, well, not as much as I could have done. That wrap dress took forever and ever and ever. <laughs> but anyway, let me tell you and show you what I've been up to sewing wise. <laughs> Well, there we are, nice to see all the sewing. And yes, here I am in another Fairfield button-up shirt. I'm getting better at making them. I adapted the pattern. Uh, the first pattern was just a little bit too tight since I haven't been going to the gym. So I just added extra around and look, it's a bit more, can you see a bit more ease in there? Um, what's that probably about half an inch worth? So it's a bit more free, I can move a bit more, um, not feel so k -k -k. Uh, So getting confident there with my patterns, but doesn't the gingham look lovely, lovely and summery. Feel I want to go out and have a picnic. <laughs> um, but yes, what did you think of the Alaska rainbow? It's only taken a year to finish. Did the, the quilt top last year when I did the quilt along with um, with Chip from Fiber Hustle or Quilt Stream um, and with Tracy and Emma from the Curly Seams. And it'd been sat like under the shelf there for so long. But um, because uh, the ladies don't come in uh, for August this year, because it's been so hot, I've had my uh, August sew month where I've been able to leave my sewing machine out and just sew lots, uh, hence the shirts and hence all those things that you've seen. So I thought, right, come on, I've got to finish this Alaska rainbow. So I put the borders on and then sent it off to Tracy Pereira, uh, who you know, you've, I've talked about her before, who is a quilter uh, and designer, and isn't it fabulous? And that's the hardest thing sometimes with quilting, is choosing what design to have. And as you can see from that Alaska rainbow, it's very busy. You've got all those sort of ice cream cones, uh, and there's a lot of movement in that. So, so to Tracy, oh, perhaps we don't want anything too, like this which you can sometimes have and is sometimes right to have so I was looking through Tracy's designs because she's a, a long armor designer too she's come up with our own uh, patterns which you can have uh, onto your quilt and there's one that Tracy designed called modern wave it gives the I feel it gives the quilt even more movement without taking away from the patchwork the patchwork really pops because sometimes you've got to get that balance haven't you do you want your patchwork to sing or do you want the quilting to sing uh, whereas on this point I knew all that work I put into I want the patchwork to sing so that subtle wave but just gives enough but look at the back <sighs> Tracy put a rainbow colored thread on the back. Wow, isn't that, well, that, just that little echo of the color from the front, the rainbow from the front on the back. And that's why she's so blinking good. Oh, and talking about her as designer, look at these from Tracy that we're selling in the shop. Oh. Almost Amish is a collection of six greeting cards with designs inspired by the bold and colourful quilts of the Amish community. The cards feature patchwork blocks made from square and rectangular patches with mock quilting stitches providing a textural element. Printed in the UK and on recycled paper and supplied in a compostable cellophane bag. <gasps> so let's have a quick look through those. So we've got um, bars. Bars is an Amish quilt design made from long strips of fabric contained by one or two framing borders and square cornerstones. Keeping the piece fabric to a minimum allows the quilting to shine in these quilts. Ah, yes, you see, that's what we were just talking about. When you've got simple patchwork there, then you probably will have busier quilting. Oh, this is a classic one. Rail fence. Recognize that? Oh yeah, we should do a little 
little competition. <laughs> See if you can guess the uh, the patchwork block before I say it. Uh, so this is rail fence. A rail fence quilt is a design made from rectangles of the same size. Two or more rectangles are stitched to form a square patch and alternated at right angles. Careful choice of fabric colour and placement can produce intriguing effects in this sample quilt. Notice the quilting is very subtle, if you can see it at all. That's the point. Right, get ready. Shout it out. What's this? Classic one. I heard you, and I heard you <laughs> loud and clear. Nine patch. A nine patch quilt is a design made from squares of the same size and arranged in three rows and three patches. The arrangement of the fabric colors can be random or organized. The pattern is simple, but allows many possible block designs because you could keep reshaping them around, moving them. Sashing and borders add further variety to the quilt layout. It is also an excellent pattern to make a scrap quilt. Yes, very much so. Get ready to shout out. I'll give you some time to look at that. Irish chain. Uh, Irish chain is a quilt design made from strips and squares. The placement of the fabric colours creates a series of crisscross linear paths to make single, double or triple chains over the quilt. Solid fabrics between the chain pattern allow space for applique or fancy quilting. Oh, one of my favourites. Get ready. I, I, you're all going to shout out here. So look at the block. That's a block there. What do you think? Good old fashioned log cabin. And this, our wonderful curtain here in the cupboard is log cabin. Can you see the block uh, there? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Jen, you're a wonder doing all this log cabin work, which I had the pleasure of sewing together. Log cabin, let's see what Tracy says about a log cabin. A log cabin quilt is made from rectangles rotating round a central square. And you keep just bong bogging them on, bogging them on. <laughs> you keep, oh, I don't know what I'm saying there. You just keep putting them on. The use and position of light and dark fabrics produce a diagonal effect in the block that creates the base quilt design. Increasing the number of fabric rounds refines the block. Rearranging the position and orientation creates many options for log cabin layouts. Yeah, so you can see, uh, where are we? The red is the first, then you put a little orange, then another one, then another one, and another one, and you just keep going round. What about this one? Do you know this one? I hadn't, I hadn't heard of this one until I saw this design. Trip around the world. Did you get it? Pound the back. Trip around the world is a quilt design made from squares of the same size contained by one or two framing borders. The patchwork and quilting designs radiate from the centre to form concentric diamonds. The choice and placement of the fabric colours are a fundamental part of the design. Wow. Blank inside, but if you have a sewing friend, a patchwork friend, and it's their birthday, or you want to say thank you, or just drop them a card to say hello. You can buy them from the website, the shop's website. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, you're supporting the shop and you're also supporting Tracy. There we are, look, that's what we've got in the shop. Hello, Tracy! <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you're you're supporting two independents there, isn't that lovely? Um, and maybe if it's popular, she'll do another collection. Uh, that's the designer in a uh, wonderful work. So there we go. So that's the Alaska Rainbow and Tracy. Um, oh, and, and yes, the quilt that I'm making for Mandy um, uh, using, I love to knit from good old Michael Miller. I love this. Let's turn it around. Well, you've seen it already, but <laughs> it's just nice to hold up. You get an idea of it. This is a quilt pattern made by the Fabric Cafe, Donna Robertson. 
uh, she designed it. It's called Easy Street. And I can't not do Easy Street <laughs> every time I say I'm doing Easy Street. Easy Street. Every time. Maybe do a few kicks in there too. That's where I'm going. Anyway, there we are. Look at that. And what I liked about this, the Fabric Cafe is quite renowned. There are uh, Donna Robertson's based in America. She has a shop and she sells fabric, but she is a pattern designer that designs patterns called the three yard quilt. So you buy three yards, or over in here in the UK, three meters, you can make a quilt out of three yards of fabric. And the basic principle is a light, medium, and a dark. That's all you need. So if you buy fabric from uh, Donna, from her shop, and uh, you buy a quilt, a three yard quilt, and you buy the fabric from that, they'll be set into those light, medium, dark. Uh, so that's what I did for this one, for Mandy. She loved the, uh, the collection because, as you know, Mandy, she's a huge knitter. So seeing a collection with sheep on saying love to knit and seeing them knit, she just said, Stuart, can I have a quilt, please? She said, I only want a lap quilt whilst I'm out in the caravan outside on holidays to go over my lap down onto the floor to cover my feet. Um, so this three yard quilt is perfect. But what I liked about this was sometimes with patchwork, you cut the fabric up so much, you lose the essence of the fabric. Whereas this one from Easy Street, kept 10 inch blocks so you could really enjoy the fabric. So there we are, there's that red one and there's that one there and that one there. So you see the whole collection and then you do have a bit of fun with these squares. And this looks really complicated, but it's not. It's a block that has an L shape. So that black has an L shape. This black has an L shape. That one has an L shape and so forth. How wonderful is that? And there's the foam. Love it, love it. Here we are. So that's been fun to do. Sorry, sorry it took so long, man. <laughs>